Acminos, known to the other members of the Knights of Honesty as Excellence, is a tiefling warlock. I want to portray him with a glowing sword. But he will not be standing in gloom. This will be an exercise in lighting. Both the sunlight above and the glowing light from the sword must fall naturally on his red skin. Elegant attire. First, to paint a glowing sword for this warlock who serves an ancient and unknowable entity. The idea with the glowing sword is to increase the brightness of the blue as I approach the edge from which the power radiates. I tried blending in a medium blue so that there was not quite such a harsh transition between the darker parts of the blade and the I need the a color to contrast with all this blue. Maybe a yellowish green will look good. Let's try that. So this looks terrible. Time to start over. Because Akmanos was so consistent in using excellence as a, an alias, I started to think of the character as excellence, showing that a secret identity works not only on players, but also on the dungeon master. Another unhappy try at a glowing sword. It's time to add some runes. Sketch them in with a fine tipped marker, and I will try to carve them into the blade. My son saw the sword at the point where I had drawn all of these little runes and thought it looked really cool, which gave me some misgivings about the next step, but I went ahead anyway. I'm trying to make the runes themselves glow. It would be easier to tell how well the carving is going if I didn't have a layer of paint, so if you know you're going to do this on a miniature, I suggest doing it without paint on the object. While carving, I thought that I had discovered that scraping sideways with the tip of the blade worked just as well as slicing out triangular sections of plastic. But once I started applying paint, I found that the paint um, had only been scraped away from those areas and that I should have sliced all of them. So I really did spend quite a few hours on this sword. By this point, I'd already painted it several times and I still have another one to go. Akmenos really began to come into his own as a character while adventuring with the party in a swamp on the Sword Coast north of Waterdeep. Never mind how they got there, that is a story for another time. Akmenos searched inside the cave-like mouth of a statue head of Carillon Lorethian, the elf god, when he discovered a newly reanimated horde of undead elves with the help of Pyra, our bard. Again, I will have to tell you how the elves were reanimated elsewhere. Akmenos bolted from the cave, tried to swim in monster-infested water to the base of a crumbling staircase, and scaled the slime-covered stones with the aid of a rope lowered by another character. While the rest of the party fled to the skeletal elves, Akmenos and two of the three barbarians, Bean and Alkan, yes, it is a large party of adventurers, made their way up the treacherous causeway to briefly confront a banshee keening over a lost musical instrument. Akmenos grabbed the instrument, which proved to be the greatest treasure yet found by the Knights of Honor. As the banshee screamed in rage, nearly killing several members of the party, Akmenos swung from Alkan's rope over the beast-filled murk of the swamp and to the relative safety of dry land. Turn our attention back to the never ending sword painting. I think that a rusted iron look is a better contrast to the glowing blue blade of this sword.
finally finish the sword. A white line on the side of the glowing part of the blade and a black line on the side of the flat part of the blade adds our last bit of contrast and with a little bit of touch up to the runes we're ready to move on. Here are all the colors of paint I used to paint this model. One glowing object is not enough for a warlock of Akmenos' stature, so we'll make a glowing orb in his belt. The reddish glow from the belt will act as a good contrast to the glowing blue of the sword, especially when the light from both are cast across his clothing. To create the skin tone for Akmenos, I mix red with a little bit of black and brown. This miniature has a fantastic face with a perfect expression on it. The shape of this tunic lends itself to looking accidentally like a terry cloth bathrobe, so of course I need a painted blue. We'll try to deal with the unfortunate appearance of terry cloth later. Nothing says hidden royalty like a pair of bloused sleeves underneath layers of other colored clothing. I picked the golden orange color of Akmenos's vest and collar to further hint at a hidden noble past. to give the orb an appearance of glowing hot. I painted it so that it was yellow in the center uh, with a highlight of white at the very center, which I did at the end, and painting the outside with a red, trying to blend the colors from yellow to red as smoothly as possible. As an aside, a coyote is running across my yard while I'm recording this. That is an unusual sight to see. south toward Waterdeep after their encounter with the strange statue of Carillon Lerethian and all of the undead elves, Akmenos got a sort of reputation as a self-serving warlock, and uh, so the next episode that really showed character growth for him was quite interesting. The Knights of Honor were beneath the streets of Waterdeep in a sewer searching for a lost friend of Vulavam Gadarm. They came upon a pair of goblin guards, dispatching one and wounding the other. Most of the party went through a secret door they had found. Akmenos followed the goblin to see if it was okay. Indeed, Akmenos's concern turned out to be genuine, and the goblin was one of only two creatures that the Knights of Honor fought that day who survived. 
the other being a Mind Flayer who survived by fleeing the party's might through a portal. metallic metal painting with this miniature. So we'll start each of the pieces of metal with black. Fancy metal spats for the boots. Adds to the idea of the hidden past of nobility. So for each bit of metal, I added a progressively lighter areas of gray until I ended up with a very small stripe of that lightest color. One of the fun things about these bits of metal is that they will get to reflect the color of the two light sources, the sword and the belt orb. Terry cloth look will add a lighter border to the tunic. And remember that this character is not standing in gloom, and the light from above should shine on his shoulders, causing a highlight. And this will be true also on his face and other areas of the character. gives off a light that reflects not only off of the metallic objects, but also off of the robe and the rest of Akmanos' clothing. Remember that the upper portion of the sword is also metallic and so needs to reflect that bright orb. So I used blue to highlight that side of Akmenos, starting with the closest objects and fading as the distance between the sword and the object increases. should also reflect those light sources, the orb and the sword, so add little spots of orange for the orb and blue for the sword. Cut the 
the figure of Acmenos from its molded plastic base, broke a piece of bark that would fit and act as a stone, flattened the bottom of the stone with a knife, glued it in place, painted it black, and glued sand around it. In order to make Acmenos stand on the stone with some stability, I drilled holes in his feet and placed much. pins in the holes. These pins I dipped into red paint so that I could find the proper look. I used sand to cover the rest of the base. One thing that I've learned is that it's nice to paint the washer that I use as a base black before I glue the sand on so that any gaps between the sand grains are already dark and the washer doesn't shine through. I used progressively lighter shades of gray to produce a natural stone appearance and then highlighted the areas where light would shine from Acmenus' sword and belt orb with blue and red to give the effect of those objects glowing. Now Acmenos is ready for further adventuring, swashbuckling with a compassionate heart. If you enjoyed this video and stories of Acmenos and the Knights of Honesty, please click the like button and return for more stories of the Knights of Honesty. Thank you for your valor.